This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. What a fun day to be a sports fan today. Everything blowing up all because of one Reddit post. Will Levis almost the favorite to be the first overall pick. Things have stabilized a bit since then, but what better time to break down the NFL draft and get you ready with some bets that Dr. Ed Fang likes based on the odds over at FanDuel Sportsbook right now. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire, Joined here as mentioned by Dr. Ed Feng. You can find his work at thepowerrank.com and check out Ed on Twitter at thepowerrank. And Ed, have you uh, fired up your Reddit account to stay up to date on all the latest NFL draft rumors? It's really Comedy Central here this morning on the NFL draft. I think it's actually kind of funny that people like me will read something that Daniel Jeremiah writes on NFL.com and that will strongly influence bets and, and the market. And he certainly influences the market. I think there's some comedy in that. I think it works, which is why I do it. But there's some real comedy <laughs> in a Reddit thread moving markets. And you can you can see the, the markets have bounced back. So yeah. it, it's not like, you know, and, and I don't think it, it wasn't a situation in which this information gave you a better price. It's not like you could have bet Bryce Young minus 300 because of this. But it's still pretty comical that this little Reddit thread um, <laughs> moves some markets today. That's that's some pretty high comedy. Yeah, in case you missed it, there was a post on Reddit uh, this morning saying that Will Levis uh, was telling family and friends he was going to go first overall. Uh, Carolina was telling him he would go first overall. And as a result, Levis shortened to, I think I saw it as short as 5-1 to one at FanDuel. But like you mentioned, Young never really lengthened much. Uh, he was minus 1,200, briefly got down to minus 900, I think is the shortest he got to at FanDuel, and then right. uh, the longest he got to. He's back out to 14, minus 1,400, and Levis is back out to 8-1. to one. So it bounced all over the place. We're going to talk about that market, talk about whether we're still confident Young goes first, what to read of Levis's stock, and also talk about takeaways from Jeremiah, you mentioned, Peter Schrager, and guys who have dumped out some news tidbits here over the past couple of days. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast tomorrow, talking some golf with Brandon Gadula, but also talking NBA playoffs. That'll be here. Kentucky Derby stuff coming up next week. We'll talk NFL win totals as well, all right here in the same feed. So go search for Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. Hit subscribe. And if you like what you hear, Leave us a five-star rating as well. The NBA playoffs are here, and you can get in on the action right from first tip with FanDuel. Right now, all customers can get a no-sweat same-game parlay every weekend when you bet the NBA playoffs. That's right. Just place place a three-plus leg same-game parlay or same-game parlay plus on any NBA playoff game. You'll get bonus bets back if you don't win. There's no better place to bet the playoff action than America's number one sportsbook. Head to the FanDuel app and get a no-sweat same-game parlay every weekend of the NBA playoffs. FanDuel official sports betting partner of the NBA. Must be 21-plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. Bonus issued is non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG. And Massachusetts Hope is here. GamblingHelplineMA.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-N-Y or text HOPE-N-Y. In Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-789. 7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in indiana 1-800-9 with it in wyoming and kansas 1-800-522-4700 in kansas ksgamblinghealth.com louisiana is 1-877-770-STOP in maryland mdgamblinghealth.org and in west virginia go to 1-800-GAMBLER.net now ed let's begin things off here by talking about the levis stuff from today as mentioned he has since lengthened back out to eight to one to be the first overall pick bryce young is minus 1400 so my read on this is there's nothing 
substantial in the Reddit post. I'm not sure if you disagree with that, but that was my read on it because of what you discussed with Young never really lengthening much. I know, I think DraftKings has him at minus 700 or so. So it's a bit better number there. But what's your read on this market given all the weird Levis stuff from this morning? I don't think there's really anything in that Reddit post. If you look at it closely, Jim, it actually doesn't say anything about it being the number one first overall pick. So maybe the, you know, the poster is referring to the 39th pick that Carolina has in the second round. And (laughs) they would definitely take Will Levis with that pick. Uh, He unfortunately probably doesn't get there. Um, So, yeah, no, I don't put too much stock in it. And the other thing, too, is... I don't put any stock into it. Yeah. Other thing, too, is going back to that Reddit post, they had said later that Carolina had told Bryce Young they would not be drafting him, and so he canceled all his visits, which... That doesn't doesn't make, make sense. sense. Doesn't pass the sniff test. So I don't quite understand that part of it. And I think the other thing too here is if we were so confident that Levis would go number one overall, I think you would have seen Young shorten for the second overall pick because Houston has been tied to him this entire time. And if he right. dropped to number two, they would take him. But Young is nine to one to, to go second overall. And again, Levis is eight to one. So it's kind of, those are somewhat correlated right. markets, but I think the fact that we didn't see more movement there tells me, I mean, the, you can see stuff leak on Reddit at times. I just don't think this is one of those scenarios. For sure. And you have Levis at eight to one to be the number one. He's the favorite at number two. I think he's the favorite at number four. I added up the implied probabilities yesterday and I got some absurdly large number. <laughs> um this is actually why it's fun and profitable to bet the NFL draft. These yeah. markets are actually t- tightly correlated, but uh, the books don't don't always do the best job, um, uh, you know, working out those correlations when mark one market moves, uh, making sure you move the other market. So uh, yeah, it makes it fun. It definitely does. So with Levis, it's not just this Reddit post. We also there was a lot of talk this weekend that the Colts prefer Levis, and I think that's a big part of why you see the odds shortening for the number two overall pick because the Texans have that pick and there's been buzz honestly since the senior bowl that they don't want a quarterback. So it's a bit odd to see Levis there. As you mentioned, he is the favorite to go fourth overall as well. Plus one thirty. in general, Ed, we've seen a lot of buzz around Levis. Let's ignore the Reddit post. I think we can push that off to the side fully, right. but looking at the more broad sentiment, do you buy into the Levis steam or do you think this is the Colts? throwing a smoke screen so no one trades up to get CJ Stroud in front of them or something like that. I have no idea. What I do know <laughs> is that a lot of people agree that no one knows what's going to happen with the second overall pick. It's quite possible that Houston doesn't know what they're going to do with that second overall pick. And I think that's, that's, we don't know what's going to happen there. We don't know what's going to happen at three, whether anyone's going to trade up to try to get a quarterback and so there's a, uh, and you know, and, and I think from what I've heard, you know, Indy probably wants Levis at four, right? So that's probably, I mean, that's, I think that's been the case for a while. So, yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of question marks there. And then the, the, you know, the, the, the conversation kind of changes once you get to five because there's different needs for Seattle and then Detroit at six. Um, and then you can start playing the Jalen Carter game there. But, um, I'm sorry, I forget exactly what you asked me. <laughs> <laughs> Just talking about Levis and the, the movement we've seen towards him, ignoring the Reddit post. Yeah. I'm really not sure what to make of this. Oh, that's the yeah. other thing. You know, Levis has been the favorite. I mean, I think he was like minus 130 to be the second pick. Right. Um, there's not a single one of the sharp mocks that I look at that had him as the number two pick. Yeah. It's pretty late in the game. Like, obviously, not all of them are like the most up to date because I'm still tracking what you know people said a little bit earlier. And and you know the way I do this is it's not like I just you know I just take it. Um, you know I kind of know who behind every draft. I know who is behind every mock draft, what right. their information is, and I try to go from there. So they're they're not all weighted equally in my mind when I when I make bets. But it zero zero of those had will Levis the number two so you know I, I think the game is to kind of think through that and what are the possibilities and and how can you potentially uh um make some winning bets because of so that. you buy into daniel jeremiah over 
random Reddit user whose account was created six days ago. I think that makes a lot of sense. Now, you mentioned <laughs> that a lot of the sharp box haven't had Levis going second overall, but there was a lot of news that came out Monday morning. It was like it was a scheduled post. Everything goes up right at eight o'clock in the morning where you've got Daniel Jeremiah's final top 150, Peter Schrager, who tends to be pretty reliable on this stuff, yeah. releasing his top five takeaways as well. When you parse through all the data from Monday, Ed, what were your biggest takeaways from everything that you saw? Right. I mean, for sure, the uncertainty at the number two pick. I think it very well could be Will Anderson. Very could, well could be Tyree Wilson. Um, I actually have Tyree Wilson at plus 650 from a long nice. time ago. And I, I, it's either him or Will Anderson to be the first even, Sorry, Tyree Wilson – Plus 650 would be the first defensive player taken. Um, you can get Will Anderson plus 100. Actually, I just bet it. Plus 100 to be the first defensive player taken. I have decided to lock in a profit there. Um, because we really don't, again, we don't know what's going to happen with number two. And then the other thing that really stuck out about Schrager was that he said Jalen Carter will not drop beyond six. Mm -hmm. And... When you look at the sharp mocks, it is literally the NFL.com guys versus everyone else. All the NFL.com guys have Jalen Carter at five to Seattle or six to Detroit. Um, you can get some pretty juicy numbers for Carter to go to five at five and six. You know, I think I wrote down plus 500 this morning. I don't think that's still available for the number five pick. Number six, uh, there might be a plus 400 still available. Uh, he may slip, but I, I think that's probably good enough information for me to to at least put a little bit down on uh, Jalen Carter at five and six. Yeah, right now Carter is four to one to go sixth overall, and he is um, plus uh, three fifty to go fifth overall. Going back to the Tyree Wilson thing, um, I know Michael Lombardi is probably not on your list of like the guys you tend to put the most stock in, but uh, he's actually had a pretty good hit rate with regards to NFL draft stuff. And he's been talking about Tyree Wilson going second overall for a pretty long time. Now he was also on the bandwagon of the Texans, not taking a quarterback with that pick. So I think that you getting Tyree Wilson at plus 650 to be the first defensive player. That's a tremendous number. Do you think that there's still value in at plus 250 for him to go second overall? Because honestly, Given the dynamics with that second overall pick, where the yeah. most likely trade down candidate is within the same division, might not want to trade in within that same division to give them a quarterback. Um, you might not want to trade down to seven, like with the Raiders or whatever, because it might miss you out on those those linemen. I think that the Wilson plus two fifty to go second overall does does interest me. Now, with you having a right. plus six fifty for first defensive player, I wouldn't take that. But if you didn't have that in your pocket. Would you right. have any interest in that number? I, I think so. Yeah. I, I mean, I just, um, I, I think you can flip a coin or a four-sided coin with this. There are some people that strongly believe that CJ Stroud is out of the running to be number two because Houston doesn't like him for whatever reason. That may be true. That's possibly true. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Tyree Wilson plus 250. Will Anderson plus 320. Uh, yeah, I definitely, definitely bets that I would consider. Yeah, but I think that just in general, checking out everything that came out Monday from people we trust a lot uh, with that regard, uh, very worthwhile in general. It's something that Ed talks a lot about is knowing who to trust and the people we trust put a lot of stuff out in the world yesterday. Now, you yeah. talk a lot, Ed, about betting markets when they're first posted. And FanDuel is one of the last books to post draft position over-unders. Uh, they, they're still somewhat fresh, I would say, later than other books. When you look at those right now, anything stand out to you with where they currently sit? Yeah, I mean, for sure. Like one of the things uh, that I liked is Dalton Dalton Kincaid uh, under 24 and a half. Uh, there's a lot of things when you look at either sharp max or you look at uh, grinding the mocks, um, which is more of an aggregate of a lot of, of mock drafts. It all points to Kincaid uh, going before the 25th pick. And it is... Um, I think you get a better number over at DK, but Dalton Kincaid is kind of an athletic freak. Daniel Jeremiah has been talking about him for a while. And uh, this is a market that, like you said, is new. And um, I think you can get some value here. Uh, yeah. I like Dal Dalton Kincaid under 24 and a half. 
I was looking at uh, Jeremiah's top 150 yesterday, and he has Kincaid, I think, ninth overall. Yep. Um, in terms of like overall, overall in terms players. of talent. Yeah. Yeah. And then you think about the teams picking before 24. You have a lot of teams that need pass catcher. I don't think it may, maybe it's not necessarily tight end, but like they need pass catchers. And in this draft, Kincaid could probably be. I think that it was Nate Tice of the Athletic called Kincaid one of the better pass catchers in the draft, like right. receiver or tight end. So if you need a pass catcher, and a lot of teams before 24 do, or before 25 do, I think that does make a lot of sense. Now, with Kincaid, um, looking at the NFL draft uh, props as far as be the top draft pick by position, I think that you're picking the right market for Kincaid under 24 and a half, because there's a good chance we see uh, both Kincaid and um, uh, Michael Mayer go pretty early on the draft. First tight end drafted, Mayer is minus 160. Kincaid is plus 125, which means this market is juiced up a lot, as they all are for sure. I think that I'd rather go with Kincaid under 24 and a half personally at minus 122 versus taking him over Mayer at plus 125. Do you agree with that as well? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so I think that's the best way to bet. Uh, Kincaid, uh, there's a lot of buzz about Sam Laporta potentially moving up, but it doesn't sound like he will be in the discussion for the first right. tight end drafted. So that's the positional props or the the draft position props. One of the one we talked here about here on the show a couple weeks ago, Ed, was over four and a half quarterbacks to go in the first round. At the time, that was plus 144. That is no longer the case. The number of quarterbacks taken in the first round uh, over four and a half is minus 215. So I actually want to ask you a quick caveat here. You got this at plus 144. Uh, the under is now plus 158. We talked about hedging before a lot, and I tend to not like it personally because it cuts into bets where I get a lot of closing line value, and I don't want to undercut my best bets. But So I, I tend to not want to do this. But you have plus 144 in your pocket would you consider adding under four and a half plus 158 as a hedge, or are you going to stand pat and take the good closing line value? No, I'm going to take the closing line value. I mean, this is, this all comes down to Hendon Hooker, and yeah. he was plus 100 over the weekend to be a first round pick, and now he's minus 200, which pretty much agrees with this. Um, I guess, I mean, this is actually a way to bet. I mean, if you don't think Hooker is going to go in the first round, then right. this is the way to bet that, right? Because right. there is actually no. There's no market for not being a first round pick. Um, so yeah, I, I think uh, I, I mean I, I like this position. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna hang tight with this. Um, and uh, but yeah, this is you know uh, under four and a half QBs is a way to bet Hendon Hooker, not a first round pick. Yeah. So we got us you got us good value there, Ed. Uh, any other spots where you see value in these markets where the over under positions drafted in the first round? Yeah, I mean, in Five Nuggets Saturday, uh, I definitely had over four, no, over five and a half offensive linemen. Uh, Drew Dinzik thought that number should be minus 900. Uh, I think, man, I, I don't know if I caught it when it was minus 330 at DK. I think it, I think it ended up being minus 380 or something like that. Uh, it has since moved to, to six and a half, pretty much yeah. even odds. Um, so that's gone. Uh, I actually do see a lot of linemen kind of at the later uh, uh, later ends of the first round of some of these sharp mocks that I'm looking at. But uh, yeah, so that was another one. It, it's gone now. But, um, but yeah, listen to Drew. <laughs> Drew's good. Shocker. Breaking news to everyone involved. Uh, check out Drew on Twitter at whale underscore cap. For that market currently right now, over six and a half on offensive line in the first round is minus 108, under is minus 122, but it does sound like with what Ed was saying, you know, given the lack of receivers that could go in the first round, all that stuff, I think that the six and a half number is probably where it should have been the whole time. Now, let's talk here about um, positions where the first player drafted is far from decided. We talked about the Mayer one versus Kincaid. Sounds like we like the Kincaid under versus that one, but there are a lot of other ones. And Ed, you've talked a lot about how you like this market because we can a, a lot of times have a decent amount of certainty in who will go first overall. We don't have the odds reflecting that certainty right now. So when you look at the first player drafted by position, anything you like in those markets right now? Yeah, I haven't made this bet and I might not depending on what people say from here until Thursday. 
But I am looking at the first offensive lineman, uh, Skaronski and, and Paris Johnson, a little Big Ten competition there. Um, oh, man, that lengthened since this morning. Uh, so it looks like Paris, if Paris Johnson is going to go first, it, it's likely seventh to the Raiders. And uh, he's, he's way ahead of Skaronski there. If that doesn't happen and the Raiders pick a cornerback, which I actually have some a bet on, um, then it looks like Skronsky is much more likely to be the tenth pick to Philadelphia. Um, so I'm trying to figure out what the sharp mocks are going to say about that as we kind of head into that. That's something I'm keeping an eye on. There potentially could be a lot of value in Skronsky there. Um, he'll have to take your Northwestern hat there uh, as he as he walks up to the stage. But uh, not one that I bet, but something I'm keeping an eye on. Yeah, right now, uh, Paris Johnson is minus 250. Skaronsky is plus 250. Darnell Wright, 8 to 1. Broderick Jones, 16 to 1. And I think the Paris Johnson movement is a result of there was a report today that Kyler Murray has vouched for Paris Johnson and wants him on the team. And there has been a lot of talk recently about how the Cardinals, if they are able to trade down, would want an right. offensive lineman to help, you know, protect Kyler. So right. I think that I'm guessing this is correlated to that where they're kind of connecting the dots on maybe if the Cardinals are able to trade down, they would go Paris Johnson and potentially that would be a situation where we could see that happening. That's interesting. How, how, how does he know Paris Johnson? What's the, uh, I there? think that he just wants a tackle if we're being fully honest. Um, I think that that's what it is. But I think that he is he is advocated for him in terms of wanting protection in the building. And it sounds like they're actually giving Kyler Murray a, a voice here. Johnson's down to plus 350 to be the third overall pick. That would assume the Cardinals can't get out of it. So I think that's the, that's the route of, there. That's kind of insane. Yeah. I mean, because that would be really interesting, right? Because you can certainly, right? I mean, the ideal situation for Arizona is that Log Vegas wants to trade up, drafting Anthony Richardson or whatever quarterbacks available, they can right. go down to seven. They can get Paris Johnson there, but the markets are actually saying they might just take him with the third pick. Right. And yeah, that's probably where that, that's for sure where that's coming from. I was looking around to see if there was a Cardinal specific prop, like so I could take the number out of it and, you know, account for the fact they might trade down. I don't see any Cardinal specific markets of like a position yeah. of first draft pick. I think that's well, we, where I'd want to go is, to be an offensive lineman. I think that that'd be where I'd want to look. Yeah, for sure. I mean, FanDuel doesn't post those team specific markets for like the top 10, right? Yeah. They just let the, they just let the, that number pick market be that. Um, you should definitely check elsewhere. Cause I think some of yeah. the other uh, sports books do have it. And I do think that like the, the drumbeat of Paris Johnson to the Cardinals has been picking up steam. And I think that it's from people I tend to, tend to trust. Uh, so I would try to find ways to leverage that potentially and see what you can find there. Anything else you want to mention as far as the draft goes, Ed, before we get Thursday night underway? Uh, no, not really. I mean, so far it's been a pretty good uh, draft betting for me. Yeah, uh, I had Will Levis uh, over seven and a half, which is dead. But that that's basically the only bet that hasn't moved my way. Um, I mean, not not the ones that I've talked about today, but yeah, the rest of them um, have have moved my way. So yeah, I'm pretty excited for Thursday to come. And um, yeah, actually, I mean, I, I do think there's probably going to be some more value over the next couple yeah. of days as we get these final mocks from from a lot of sharp people. And uh, hopefully, there's even more value to be found. If people want to sweat with with you, what's your uh, what's your biggest uh, rooting interest right now as far as uh, financially? For Thursday night, is it the four and a half quarterbacks one or anything else? No, I mean, there? I don't have anything particularly yeah. big. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's kind of spread out over eight, ten bets, and probably more. Uh, I've definitely I've been saving these for members of my site, so yeah. you can check that out at thepowerrank.com. There will definitely be more tomorrow. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, hoping right. for the best on Thursday. As Ed mentioned, check out all that stuff over at thepowerrank.com. Sign up for Five Nuggets Saturday to get ahead of the uh, the markets moving like they did with the offensive lineman one. Uh, not just for that, but also for plenty of other things as well. You can find Ed on Twitter at the Power Rank and uh, check out the stuff at thepowerrank.com. Ed, I appreciate you swinging by as always, talking to the NFL Draft. It's been a fun season once again, and good luck to you on Thursday night with all your bets. Thanks so much, Jim.
All righty, check out Ed on Twitter at The Power Rank. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonis. Want to thank you all for tuning in back once again tomorrow talking about the PGA Tour at the Mexico Open and some NBA playoffs. Should be a lot of fun. We'll talk to you then. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 